All right, ready to call the cases? And I can begin, please. Mr. Chair, may I begin? Yes, please. Uh, welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's uh, Thursday docket. Today is June 11th, 2020. Uh, this is going to be our first set of virtual hearings uh, wherein uh, we will be hearing violation cases. I'm just going to go over quickly the uh, docket notes. Uh, there is the link um, to the hearing page and the access code. Uh, so I would just suggest any members of the public now, if they wish to view the hearing, please go to that link. This introduction is also available on our website, uh, llb.baltimorecity.gov. Um, next, materials evidence. This is, as I said, since this is our first for violation hearing docket, copies of the short docket, which pr provide a brief description of the cases before the board and long docket are found on the hyperlinks that are listed here. Uh, we've informed all parties that if there's gonna be any evidence considered by the board, they try to send it to us at least 48 hours before the hearings. Remember licensees should make all, and their attorneys going to the related items should make all efforts to provide any documentation they're planning to submit to us um, by June 9th, uh, 2020, 11 a.m. And we uh, published this on our website and sent it out um, to the licensees. Uh, here are the procedures. Uh, these are just a little bit different from uh, our other hearings. There's gonna be a preliminary reading of the instructions and uh, calling of the cases. Uh, there'll be an evidentiary hearing, and that is where the board um, will hear all, any and all evidence from the attorney, from the licensee, concerning the case at hand. Upon the conclusion of the hearing and closing arguments, uh, the board will vote to determine whether or not a violation is heard. Um, if the board hears a violation or if the board finds a violation, they will go into sentencing. Uh, it is at this time that the board will ask members of the public if they wish to present any testimony during the mitigation phase of the hearing. Uh, if you are online, um, I would ask that you please use the raise your hand function to uh, identify yourself so that you can be called before the board. Please note, uh, you're going to have to be sworn in by our court reporter who is present. And then after um, the board hears evidence uh, regarding mitigation, we will go into sentencing. Uh, just general ground rules, uh, friendly neighbor rules. Uh, please speak slowly and clearly uh, to the court reporter who understands exactly what is being said and who is saying it, please identify yourself before you speak. You know, all attendees, applicants, licensees, members of the public that wish to provide testimony during the hearings, remember have to be sworn in. I'd ask just generally again, if uh, you are a member of the public, try to be in a place where we have strong internet connection and good lighting so that you can be seen. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Chair, may I please go into the docket? Yes, please call the first case. Call the first case. Which is Mayor Jeringa Hamigan, Sandy Corala, and Stephen Morgan, Cantha Incorporated, trading as Garden Hub, 5511 Bel Air Road, is a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on February 5th, 2020. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair, I do have a preliminary matter regarding this case. The preliminary matter involves, um, in the charging document, it states uh, that uh, a cadet Brown had purchased the alcoholic beverage, utilizing a $20 bill, Brown purchased the alcoholic beverage. It was actually cadet Allender. That was a typo. And for the record, I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. All right. With that, if you give me a moment, I'm going to pull in the, uh, the parties. <clears throat> And I'm here. You knocked me out. I'm here. Hold on, Mr. Kadinsky. Hold on, sir. I'm here. Okay. I should have um, a, uh, Agent Perez. Are you there? Yes. All right. And you've been made a panelist. Uh, Chief Chris Amalis, are you there? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Please, can you, Chief Chris Amalis, can you just uh, please get to a, a room where you're not near uh, anybody else who's viewing this? I'm in my own. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. The feedback. Um, Detective Gatto, are you here? Okay. And I believe this was uh, Cadet Allender. Cadet Allender, major panelist, are you here? Allender? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. And with that, Mr. Kadinsky, all of the um, individuals are present, I believe. Do you have a, um, a the licensee? Is the licensee present? I'm, uh, for the record, Melvin J. Kadinsky, 320 North Charles Street. I represent the licensees that have authority to proceed on their behalf. Actually, I have Mr. Holm again. I've just made him a panelist as well. Yeah, I understand. I, I did talk with him. I told him to come on in. And um, based on talking with Mr. Holm again, this would be the admission. Uh, I appreciate that, Mr. Kadensky, but just for the uh, sake of the record, let's have the reporters swear all potential witnesses. Is the reporter there, Tom? The reporter should be here. <clears throat> Hold on, let's see. If, uh, Madam reporter, are you here? Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, um. Hold on. Oh, gosh. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Madam. <laughs> Okay. We've got all okay. the uh, all right. potential witnesses present, so if you would swear them, please. Okay, and I just can't see Mr. Home again by uh, video. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can let everyone respond. Can you please identify yourself when you say I do? I'm um, home again, and I swear. I don't know if everybody's on. Detective Gatto, I do. Agent Perez, I do. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Kadansky, uh as we indicated earlier, your client's charged with a sale to minor on February 5, 2020. You said that He's authorized you to admit the violation. Do you want to speak to the board about this? Yeah, um, in, in this particular instance, uh, and I have talked to my client at length on it, um, he's had um, all his uh, staff take the alcohol awareness, which was issued by John Murray. The individual, Timothy Suggs, who did the, was the cashier, that was his first day behind the register, and he did not check. So that's the admission. Since then, they've all been certified, and Mr. Hunkin explained to him the consequences of selling to minors, which not only impact the business, but also the neighborhood. Uh, they have a 100% ID check now, and he made sure that the staff knew that in the, uh, it's their responsibility, and in the future, if any uh, type thing would happen, be deducted from their pay, and they would possibly subject to suspension uh, or being let go. They have a strict ID policy and both uh, himself and other members of the a licensee conduct a, a secret shopper checks uh, so they can make sure they're they're following along. Uh, I wouldn't know that they've had some things in the past, but I think they've corrected it. One thing I would you know add is that, you know, this is a tough time for everybody and I think they've corrected everything. That would be our, uh, our submission to you. Uh, at the establishment, they're not open now, right? I, I'm not sure. Mr. Hom Mr. Homigan is the owner. He will let you know. I think uh, th they might have been open for selling some package goods, but not not normally. Okay. Do the commissioners have any questions? I, I don't have any questions or comment, which can wait until long. Mr. Guy? Uh, no, I have no questions at this time. Okay. Mr. Nancy, is there anything further? 
No, nothing further, but I would, you know, ask that the board look at it in light of the circumstances best and what and what corrective action they've taken. Okay, so um, uh, we'll rule and then we'll give the public an opportunity to comment. Um, so on the basis of the um, in the complaint, um, the submission by counsel on behalf of the uh, licensees, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on February 5, 2020. Um, in consideration, uh, Commissioner Guy speaking, in the consideration of the testimony and the evidence presented to the board in this case, I find the licensee in violation of Rule 401A uh, sale to a mono on February the 5th, 2020. I join my colleagues uh, based upon uh, the proffer from Mr. Kaninsky uh, that this is a violation of Rule 4.01A sales to minors on February 5th, 2020. Um, Mr. Akras, is there a public comment before we uh, impose a sanction? Uh, yes, and um, Mr. Chair, if I may make a comment, for all of those individuals who are going to be testifying, if you have the ability, I'd ask that you turn on your cameras too. Uh, particularly for our agents um, and uh, or members of the police department. Um, so with that, uh, I would ask if there are any members of the public wish to testify now, please use the raise your hand function. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not see any members of the public that wish to provide testimony. Okay, thank you. Then we'll proceed to the sanctions. So uh, this is the third violation for sale to minor since this license was issued in 2016. And normally, um, this would be a fairly stiff fine at least. Um, but I'm inclined to be a little more lenient since these uh, operations have been closed for such a period of time and suffered economically. Uh, given Mr. Kadensky's assurance that they are taking this very seriously and that they are uh, making progress and steps to ensure this doesn't happen again, um, I would probably normally impose at least a $1,500 fine, but in this case, I will make it a $750 fine and give them 30 days to pay. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, uh, I would con concur. Uh, I also feel that uh, this, this is the uh, third violation, but I was looking at the, uh, the time span uh, and uh, based upon the evidence that, that was given, that uh, everyone has has been recertified, and uh, we've taken precautions uh, that this will not occur again, uh, I I go along uh, with what was just was uh, just stated. I agree with the violation and the penalty. Thank you. Uh, I. Uh... I sort of I side with my colleagues here. I ordinarily would have imposed Mr. Kadinsky a much more serious and stiff penalty. This being the third um, since the license has had the license. The last violation was two and a half months before. So I'm particularly concerned about this establishment. But because of uh, your assurances that they'll be certified. There's a hundred percent. They're instituting a secret shopper. I will go um, with the chairman and impose a seven hundred and fifty dollars fine. I hope we don't see them back in a violation uh, setting again, because uh, the fourth would would we do them in. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'd call exhibits for the record. Board exhibit one, Bomber State Police Department report, Detective Gatto. Board exhibit two, violation report, Agent Perez. Thank you. And um, Mr. Kadinsky, uh, we're just going to be sending you notice via mail of the fine and the uh, penalty imposed by the board. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I have the next case. So I'll just stay on. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Chair, may I have your indulgence for a second? I need to speak with Sergeant Leisher. Okay. And Tom, you, you haven't put up the charging documents. So you might want to do that. Uh, the charging documents are all should be uh, in front of the the board right now. Okay, I see it now. Okay, um, Sergeant Leisher. Here. 
uh, is, are, will you be testifying on the next case? I believe the next case was Elsie Greenhill. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll testify for LC because the cadet's here as well, so we'll be fine. Okay, all right, I'm going to make you a panelist now, okay? Sounds good. Allender, you should still be on the line, correct? Is that one here? I'm still here. You're still here, correct? Cadet Allender, are you still here, correct? Yes, sir, I'm still here. Okay, great. I'm leaving your mic on so that way you have any questions you can uh, the court can ask them. Sergeant Leisher, you've been made a panelist. Uh, if you could turn your camera on. And I have Chief Chris Amalis, who's a panelist, and uh, Agent Perez, who's a panelist. Madam Court Reporter. Do we have anybody for the licensees? Um, I'm, I'm all is here. Let me see if we have. I've got. I do actually. I've got Miss Singh, who should be coming up. Miss Singh, are you there? It's the Mister. Oh, Mister, sorry, Mister Singh. Yeah, okay. Um, the licensee, the attorney, and all uh, parties will be giving testimony. I've now been made panelists. Thank you, Ed. The record, please. I'll, for the record, I'll I'll have 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 so, I can't hear him. <laughs> Madam Court Reporter, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, okay, we've got okay. all, the, all the panelists are ready to be sworn in. Was Mr. Kadesky okay. there? Did he identify himself? Yeah, uh, for the record, Melvin J. Kadesky, 320 North Charles Street, representing licensing. Thank you. Now we'll swear off, <laughs> please. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If you can just state, state your name first. Mr. Singh, they're talking to you. Oh, can you please raise your right hand? Yes, uh, Farm G. Singh. And Mr. Leischer, Sergeant Leischer. I do. Eight. Chief Chris Amalis. And uh, Agent Perez. Agent Perez, I do. Okay. For, uh, Sergeant Leisher, Chief Chris Amalis. We didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Chief Chris Amalis, I do. Okay. All right. All right. Is that everyone then? It is. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kedensky, uh, your client is charged for the sale of the minor on February 5, 2020. Will be denial. It, it, it's an admission, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. To explain what happened that day. Yeah, this is a, a rather recent uh, transfer. Uh, it was the first uh, um, violation for this particular licensee at Frankfurt Garden Liquors. Uh, was transferred sometime, sometime in January. Um, the particular licensee, Mr. Uh, Singh, was getting uh, most of his people together uh, and giving them instructions on what they do and to get them all certified. However, in this case here, um, the other Mr. Singh, who happened to be a relative, was actually pinch hitting and it was not um, one of the people who were um, uh, certified, but in the meantime, he has got them certified. He's explained to them the seriousness of the situation that the board takes with regard to ser serving minors and would feel this would be an isolated instance um, being the, his uh, first violation and the people would be certified. Okay, uh, the commissioners have any questions? Guy, I have not. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Uh, normally I ask uh, maybe uh, uh, one of the, a the agents or inspectors could cooperative with you? Yes, they have. Okay, thank you. 
Um, all right, just a minute further. Nothing further. All right. On the basis of materials contained in the charging documents, proper from counsel and testimony received, I find a violation of Rule 4.1 small a on February 5, 2020. Commissioners? In consideration of the testimony and the evidence presented to the board, in this case, I find the licensee in violation of Rule 401A sale to a minor on February the 5th, 2020. Uh, I, too, uh, based upon the evidence and the proffers from uh, counsel, find violation of Rule 4.01A sales to minor on February 5th, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Ackers. We have public testimony. One moment. If any member of the public wishes to testify at this uh, moment, please use the raise your hand function uh, and you'll be selected. Mr. Chairman, there are no uh, members of the public that wish to testify. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, in consideration of Mr. Kadensky's uh, explanation of what occurred and the fact that this is a fairly new licensee who was probably closed down shortly after uh, he got the license, uh, and that this hopefully is an isolated incident. Um, I'm going to reduce my normal sanction for uh, a single offense, and I would impose a $250 fine and give him 30 days to pay. Commissioners? I also, I also concur uh, with, with the commissioner. I, I, uh, uh, due to the circumstances uh, surrounding this and based upon the evidence that was given, uh, I also agree that the uh, penalty should be the $250. Thank you. Uh, I concur with the chairman uh, uh, for an imposition of a $250 fine. All right, thank you, folks. Uh, and um, that was, thank you very much. And, and Mr. Previs is here. He has the fourth case. He'll be uh, using this same phone. So I'm just going to leave it and click it over to him, okay? Thank you. Right to call the is for the record. What is it for one? Bomber City Police Department report, Detective Greenhill. What is it for two? Violation report, Agent Perez. Uh, and uh, Mr. Kadinsky, just to let you know, we will be mailing you. Um, the penalty information as imposed by the board shortly. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'm going to call the next case. Well, Mr. Chairman, since we have um, Mr. Previs on the line, could we jump to case number four? Unless, uh, and I don't believe there are any other attorneys on the line. I believe the, the, the other remaining cases are self-represented. Can we jump to case number four? That's fine. Okay. Calling case number four, Gotham, Gilly uh, and uh, Robel Kinade, uh, Schwelti LLC, trading as Sun M Liquors, 2700 West North Avenue, the class A beer wine liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, November 21st, 2019. Uh, with your indulgence, I will get all the proper parties as panelists. Uh, Mr. Priebus, are you there? I'm here with my client. Okay. Uh, Cadet Stokes, are you present? Cadet Stokes? Cadet Stokes, I'm unmuting you. Can you verify that you're here? I'm here, sir. Okay. Cadet Stokes is present. Uh, commissioners, all parties are present for this matter. Okay, thank you. Mr. Previs, we identify yourself for the record, please. Thank you. Peter Previs, on behalf of the licensees, Goydom Hatevsky and Robel Kadani. Mr. Uh, Hatevsky is here, and I will have him identify himself as well. Okay. Goydom Hatevsky. Good morning. Let's uh, have the uh, reporters swear everyone, please. Raise your right hand. Um, and I just need to see the video. 
or by phone. Oh, oh okay. okay. All right, uh, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. The other witnesses? Sar Sergeant Leisher, can you confirm? I do. Chief Chris Amalis, can you confirm? Uh, I do. Agent Perez, can you confirm? I was not involved in that case, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Those are all the parties who are present who are testifying have confirmed. Cadet Stokes? I do. Okay. And, um, Mr. Previs, your client is charged with a uh, sale of minor violation on November 21, 2019. Is it an admission or a denial? It is an admission, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Would you like to give the board an explanation? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hobtetsky is from Eritrea. Uh, he's here as a refugee. His wife is also from Eritrea, but is a refugee in Uganda, and they have a three-year-old son. We have been having quite some time getting his wife's uh, immigration paperwork completed. At the time that this occurred, Mr. Hoptetsky hadn't quite left for Uganda yet, but was shopping for the trip for, to buy provisions for his wife and child, and had a nephew who was in training who could work while he was away. That, that nephew was Mr. Roby uh, Test File Debt. It may say Ms. Rossi Test File Debt on the, on the docket, but it was actually a, a nephew, Roby. Um, at the time that this occurred, the other regular who works in the store, Mr. Zaridi Tesfaye, was distracted by a group of young people who were on the other side of the store, and he went to deal with them, and the trainee was left alone and sold to the cadet. He was trained, he was informed, but was uh, really green when this occurred. He stopped working there when Mr. Habtes back from Uganda, which was back in March, uh, and it's back to the two regulars. Mr. Hoptetsky per purchased this store on April 6, 2017. He lives upstairs. He's fully involved in the community and running a, a solid operation. Uh, he has two letters of recognition dated December 14, 18, and February 24, 2020, that he did not sell to minors but he did in fact sell to a minor when he first started. Uh, and that date of that prior hearing was uh, May 3rd, 2018. He is still open and operating. It's a, it's a class A license uh, with uh, non-alcoholic goods as well, but things are not the same. He is alcohol awareness certified um, and uh, he will be more, more vigilant. Uh, this was an oversight. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Have questions? No questions. Mr. Guy? Uh, no, I have no questions. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Previous, on the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents and your proper and any evidence received, I find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sale of minor on November 21, 2019. Commissioners? Yes, in consideration of the testimony and evidence presented to the board in this case, I find the licensee in violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minor, uh, on November the 21st, 2019. On the basis of the evidence and the proffers from Mr. Priebus, I too find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on November 21st, 2019. Thank you. Uh, do the public have comment? Indulgence, Mr. Chair. At this time, if there's any member of the public that has any comments or would like to provide testimony or evidence in regards to this matter, please use the raise your hand function. Mr. Chairman, I see no individuals that wish to give testimony in this matter. All right, we'll proceed then. Uh, Ms. Priest, I appreciate your explanation and the difficulties that these uh, folks are going through with uh, immigration situation. Um, 
and uh, the pandemic situation and the economic uh, harm that that's caused a lot of our licensees. Um, so this is the second violation in a relatively short period of time, and normally I would be more severe, as I said uh, earlier today. But I'd be willing to uh, uh, impose a three hundred fifty dollar fine here and give him thirty days to pay. Commissioner Guy, uh, I can. I also uh, concur with the uh, chairman. Uh, I understand the circumstances that were uh, presented here in evidence today, uh, but I, I, this is a violation, and uh, I concur with with the chairman's uh, decision. Thank you. I concur with the chairman as well. Uh, would impose a three hundred fifty dollar fine with thirty days to pay. Appreciate the fact that he's received some letters of recognition, Mr. Priebus, and. Um, um, and certainly the situation, the immigration situation, and obviously the what's going on with the pandemic. And so in, in light of that, uh, would impose a less severe uh, uh, fine and um, hopefully then we won't see him another violation done. Thank you, commissioners. I'm call exhibits for the record. Board exhibit one, Bomber City Police Department report, Detective Greenhill. Board exhibit two, investigation report, Agent Martin. Um, and Mr. Previs, uh, just to um, advise you, we'll be sending you the information in regards to the board's uh, uh, imposition, the penalty via mail. Thank you. I, and I just want to explain to the board that my internet was knocked out because we are having Verizon move our service to our new office, which we'll be moving into in two weeks. Um, that's why I had to come to Mr. Kadensky. And thank you for your indulgence. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Return. I'll go back. I'm going to be calling the third case on the docket. Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, Sharma PN Singh Incorporated trading as one stop shop liquor, 4905 Frankfurt Avenue. It's a class A beer wine and liquor license. It's a violation of rule 4.01A, sales to minors, and a violation of rule 3.03C records uh, both on february 5th uh, 2020 with your indulgence mr chair i'm going to bring in the parties thank you the sing yes now I'm pulling you in right now. And I believe we still have Cadet Stokes. Cadet Stokes, are you present? Yes. And Agent Perez, you should be present as well. I'm here. Okay, great. We have all the parties present. Would they please raise their right hands and be sworn? Okay, um, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Agent Perez? I do. Sergeant Leischer? I do. Cadet Stokes? I do. Thank you. So is it Miss Singh or Miss Sharma? Uh, it's Miss Singh right now here. Uh, uh, Miss Singh, okay. So uh, you're charged with a violation, a minor violation on February 5, and with a records violation on the same date. Do you wish to admit or deny those violations? Say that again, please. Do you wish to admit those violations or deny them? And I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. I admit. Oh, thank you. Both violations. Uh, yes. Okay. So we'll give you an opportunity to explain what happened on February five, please. So uh, this was a new employee uh, that who was under training, and uh, he uh, once he uh, did 
got the ticket. He just uh, quit without even telling us that we got a ticket. And uh, we only found out once we got the notice that he got a uh, got us a ticket. Is that Mr. Parkey you're talking about? No, it was uh, Mr. Thirain. Maybe that's his last name. I don't even remember that. He quit right after this incident. So what is the status of your records? Are they on the premises? Uh, I don't I don't understand that. So uh, one of the violations is the failure to produce employee records. They were requested by our inspector. Um, do you have them on the premises with you? Yes, I think so. You don't you're not sure. No. Well, that's required by our rules and regulations. So I'm going to tell you that you need to make sure that that's the case in the event that our inspectors show up again. Do you understand? Yes. You mean the employee record? You, that's what you're saying? Yes. Okay. They need to be available when our inspectors request them. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, another one is, uh, Inspector Perez, Agent Perez, have you had any problems with this establishment? No, sir. Um, okay, uh, Ms. Cindy, do you have anything else you wanted to tell us? Uh, just that we, uh, ever since we've been on this location, uh, as per my knowledge, we've never had that issue before. We've never, we've been very vigilant with checking IDs. This, this was probably one of our first uh, incidents where we got this ticket. That's correct. And ever since ever since uh, that incident, we've been more careful and we've um, uh, informed our, all our employees that we need to check IDs uh, no matter what. And are your employees who handle the alcohol certified? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so I agree with you that this is the uh, first sale to minor offense and you've had this license since 2012. Um, so if there's nothing further, on the basis of the material document and your testimony, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01A on February 5, 2020, and a violation of Rule 3.03C on February 5, 2020. Commissioner? Yes. Uh, in consideration of the testimony and evidence presented to the board in this case, I find the licensee in violation of Rule uh, 4-01A, sale to a minor, and Rule 3.03C, employee records not presented uh, or requested on February the 5th, 2020. Thank you. Uh, based upon the testimony from Ms. Singh, I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors on February 5th, 2020. I also find a violation of Rule 3.03C, records, on February 5th, 2020. Thank you. Did the public have comments before we proceed to the sanction? Um, your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Uh, if there are any members of the public who would wish to provide testimony at this time, please use the raise your hand function. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I see no individuals that would wish to testify in this matter. Okay. Ms. Singh, I want to tell you that we've been uh, a little more lenient today than we normally are because of the current economic situation and the virus situation. Uh, mm -hmm. so don't take this as uh, any prelude to what would come if you had to come back for further violations. But uh, I accept your explanation as to the sale to minor uh, rule 4.01A violation. Uh, and I would impose a $250 fine for that and give you 30 days to pay it. As to the rule 3.03 violation, um, I would not impose a sanction. I don't think you fully understood what our rules required, and I think, given your record, that you will uh, comply with them in the future. So it would be a two hundred fifty dollars fine, thirty days to pay. Commissioner, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Guy, I I concur with the chairman uh, that uh, the fine should be uh, two hundred fifty dollars for the violation of the sale to the minor, and. Uh, I also agree with the uh, violation of the records uh, that it was something that you didn't fully understand and there's no uh, monetary uh, penalty for, for that occurrence. Thank you. I concur with the uh, 
imposition of a $250 fine uh, for the sales to minors. Um, I would concur with the uh, imposition of no fine on the violation of the records. I would ask um, whether it's um, Agent Perez or someone else from the Liquor Board, if they could uh, appropriately meet with the thing and make sure she fully understands the record uh, requirement because uh, they have had a good uh, record uh, since having this license and I'm not sure that she fully understands and I think she needs to because I uh, wouldn't want to see her again back on a violation docket for the same. All right, thank you, Ms. Singh. Thank you so much. I close the episode of the record. Order Civil 1, Bomber State Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Order Civil 2, Violation Report, Agent Perez. Uh, two notes. Um, yeah, Ma'am, uh, you will be receiving uh, via mail the uh, board's imposition of the uh, penalty. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Greenfield, we will follow up. Um, Perez and or uh, Chief Chris Amalis will follow up on that matter, advising the licensee. Thank you. Thank you. Calling the next case on the docket, which I believe is the last case on the docket, uh, Edward, uh, Edward Jeter and Amirza Hader uh, Mookie, PNA Incorporated, trading as Washington Bar and Liquor, 2501 through 03 Washington Boulevard. This is a class BD7 beer wine and liquor license. It's a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on February 5th, 2020. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I may have your indulgence to pull in the proper parties. Please do. Okay. Uh, just so I can take roll, uh, Cadet Stokes, are you still with us? Ed Stokes? I'm sorry, we did not hear you. Ed Stokes, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I'm yes, I can. Him. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, Mr. Mookie, are you here? I'm here, sir. Can you please turn on your camera? And Detective Gatto, is this your case, I believe? Yes, sir. Okay, you're here? Yep. Gotcha. All right, and all right, uh, Ms. Chair, all parties are present in this matter. All right, I ask the recorder to swear them, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And please raise your hand. I do. I'll just go through. Mr. Mookie, what was, did you say I do? I do, sir. Okay. Um, uh, Agent Perez? I do, sir. Uh, Detective Gatto? Yes, I do. Uh, okay. All the, uh, and um, Cadet Stokes? I do. Okay. All the parties have been sworn, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Mookie, uh, you're charged with a sale to minor violation. <laughs> Five of this year. Do you wish to admit or deny the violation? Uh, I admit, sir. Okay. Would you explain to the board any uh, circumstances that occurred on that day? Um, yes, sir. So uh, on that particular day, the uh, concerned uh, person uh, was a new employee working there and um, who is no longer with the establishment anymore. Uh, we've taken, and this is the first violation that we've had ever since we've taken over the business. Um, after that, we've been having regular checks by the management. We intend to implement our own secret shopper program uh, once the pandemic is over um, and try to run the business as smoothly as possible. All our employees uh, are certified now, um, and that's about it, sir. Okay. Uh, the commissioners have questions? I have none. No questions. Okay. Uh, the public have. Uh, well, let me go to the uh, to the disposition, Mr. Mookie. On the basis then of your admission, uh, testimony, and the uh, materials with the charging documents, 
I find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on February 5, 2020. Commissioner? Uh, in consideration of the testimony and evidence presented to the board in this case, I find a licensee in violation of Rule 4.01A sell to a minor on February the 5th, 2020. Thank you. On the basis of the admission, I too find a violation of Rule 4.01A sales to minors on February 5th, 2020. All right. Mr. Ackers, do we have public comment? Uh, in intelligence, sir. Uh, Any time, oh, sorry, if any member of the public right now would uh, like to comment on this case, please use the raise your hand function. Uh, Mr. Chair, I see no individuals that would like to testify in this matter. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mookie, um, this is your first sale to minor violation. You've had this license for about 11 years, and you have other violations, but I note that there, the last one was five years ago. Um, so I'm going to give you credit for having cleaned up your act. Uh, in the last five years. We have been uh, a bit lenient with our licensees this time around, given all the circumstances that everybody's facing. So I would impose a $250 fine and give you 30 days to pass. Thank you so much. To the guy, uh, I also con concur with the uh, chairman's decision that the uh, penalty is the $250 for the vet violation. I too concur with the chairman and would impose a $250 fine with 30 days to pay. Uh, but Mr. Mookie, uh, be careful going forward and, and keep your record clean from here on out. Thank you for appearing. Yeah. Thank you, I sure will. I call this episode of the record. Board Exhibit 1, Former State Police Department Report, Detective Gatto. What is Exhibit 2, Investigation Report, Agent Perez. Thank you, uh, Ms. Russell. Uh, Mr. Akras, is that our docket? Uh, Mr. Chair, that completes our uh, docket today. The board will be in recess until further notice. Uh, we'll be scheduling a docket for uh, June 25th. Is that the next docket? That's the next docket, sir. Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.